Hey, Dr. Amy here. In this video, I'm showing you the side effects of chemotherapy that you absolutely need to know about. And more importantly, exactly what you can do to prevent the side effects or get rid of them altogether. How you support your body during chemo treatment makes a big difference to how well you can tolerate the treatment. Let me show you how it's done. Now, chemotherapy is a complex but often necessary treatment for cancer. It can be administered through an IV or orally, and it attacks rapidly dividing cells, especially cancer cells. Because it targets rapidly dividing cells, it often targets healthy cells as well. As a result, you may get some of these side effects. Let's start with the short-term side effects of chemotherapy, then we'll move on to the long-term side effects, and more importantly, how you can support your body in getting rid or preventing both. Now, short-term side effects are an expected part of your chemotherapy. Just like taking any medication, there's going to be side effects, and chemotherapy is no different. Now, the most thought about and recognized side effect of chemotherapy is nausea and vomiting. Most people think about this when they think about chemo. Nausea and vomiting is typically the most pronounced at the start of your chemo cycle. This means within the first 24 hours or a few days after you receive your dose of chemo. But then it improves over time. With that said, the majority of people who receive chemotherapy treatment, they don't have nausea and vomiting. And if they do, it's very mild. Over the past several decades, things have really improved in terms of nausea and vomiting. There are much better drugs and we have better control over these symptoms. Now, not to say that it's perfect for everyone, but you don't need to be fearful of severe nausea and vomiting. Another aspect to consider is the impact that chemotherapy has on your white blood cell count. It's not uncommon for these blood cells to decrease between your chemo cycles. And the good news is that they usually recover by the time your next treatment is due. White blood cells are typically monitored before the start of your next cycle. If they have not recovered, then treatment may need to be delayed. However, there are great ways to support your body in recovery. We know that adequate protein levels are needed to support your body in generating new white blood cells. And during cancer treatment, when your appetite and your taste is heavily impacted, it makes it even more difficult to eat adequate levels of protein. So concentrate on including protein at every single meal breakfast, lunch, and supper. This will help support your body in recovering between cycles. Now, if you find you're having issues with low white blood cells and they're not recovering in time for your next chemo treatment, then your team may give you growth factor. This is gonna help stimulate the production of white blood cells and help stimulate your immune system. Now, there are other short-term side effects of chemo, but they are less common. Things like mouth sores, constipation, or diarrhea can certainly happen. However, the silver lining is that these issues, they often improve before the next cycle. This is typically something that's rather short-lived. Okay, but the last short-term side effect that we need to touch on is taste changes. Chemotherapy can significantly impact your taste and appetite. Many people experience a metallic taste, which makes it difficult to enjoy food. But there are ways to support yourself in eating and overcoming these taste changes. If you get a metallic taste in your mouth, then try adding citrus to your meals. This strong flavor may help you overcome the metallic taste. You can also try to avoid metal utensils. Try using a bamboo or plastic cutlery. The metal utensils may actually worsen the metallic taste. Now, if you find that you just lack taste, like nothing tastes good anymore, then you need to try adding in some strong herbs or flavors. Things like fresh basil or garlic or ginger. Or add in a strong sauce like soy sauce. Having that big punch of flavor can help you overcome the lack of taste. Okay, but let's move on to the long-term side effects of chemo, starting with hair loss. One of the most visible and emotionally challenging side effects of chemotherapy, it's hair loss. This typically occurs 14 to 17 days after your first chemo cycle. This can be a difficult aspect to cope with. It's definitely something that I personally struggled with when I was going through my own treatment. Now, some women choose to cold cap to help save their hair, and other women use wigs or hats. But I often get asked, is there anything you can do to help support your hair in growing back faster? And during chemo, there's not much that can be done. With ongoing chemo cycles, your hair is just not gonna grow back. But after chemo, there's a few things that you can focus on. First is that you need to make sure you're hitting target nutrition levels. Your hair, it needs specific amino acids to grow. 
if you are getting these amino acids in your hair, it's gonna grow back slower. Now, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So to make sure you're getting the right amino acids and enough of them, it's important to eat a variety of protein sources. Chicken, fish, black beans, chickpeas, nutritional yeast. Variety will ensure you're getting all the amino acids that you need. But the number one long chemo side effect, what the overwhelming majority of people experience is exhaustion. This is the most common side effect with 96% of people diagnosed with cancer experiencing some level of exhaustion. Tiredness, fatigued, exhausted. Sometimes it starts off really severe with it gradually improving over time. Most individuals will return to normal energy levels somewhere between six to 12 months after their chemo treatment. A general rule of thumb is that your recovery, it will take double the amount of time you spent in chemo treatment. So if you had chemo for six months, then it's gonna take you 12 months to recover. Now, this is obviously an incredibly long time. I did not wanna wait that long to recover from chemo, and I'm sure you don't want to either. The good news is that cancer exhaustion, it can be corrected. Many women come to me wanting help with their energy and to get their energy back. And with the right nutrition and movement strategy, you can get back to full energy in 21 days. Give me three weeks and you're gonna start to feel like yourself again. That's exactly what I do in the Cancer Freedom Program. Click the link below to apply. Okay, but there are other long chemo side effects that you need to know about. A lot of clinicians just overlook these side effects or brush them off, but they can significantly impact your life, starting with forced menopause. Now, this can happen intentionally as part of your cancer treatment. For example, breast cancer survivors will be given medications or treatments to actively suppress their estrogen levels. Drugs like tamoxifen, letrozole, exemestane. You're being pushed into forced menopause with these drugs and other cancer survivors may undergo a hysterectomy, or even others may end up in menopause or perimenopause just because of the insult to their body from chemotherapy. Either way, you may experience the symptoms and side effects of forced menopause. These are things like insomnia, mood swings, vaginal dryness, or hot flashes. Obviously, none of these side effects sound pleasant, and there are tips and strategies to get rid of them altogether. Many cancer survivors struggle with peripheral neuropathy as a consequence of their cancer treatment. This is like a pins and needle feeling in your fingertips or your toes. It's a type of nerve damage as a result of your chemotherapy. And it can persist after chemotherapy, but it will gradually improve over time. But nerves do take a long time to heal, so patience is needed here. Now, next up with the long chemo side effects is something that hardly anyone talks about chemo brain. Cognitive problems, often referred to as chemo brain, can impact your memory or your cognitive function. This is frustrating because you can't multitask or remember names like you used to. But various strategies, including engaging in conversation or playing different word games, they can help improve your chemo brain over time. Your brain needs training, just like your muscles. It's possible to overcome chemo brain once you're done with treatment. Okay, but the last long chemo side effect you need to know about is that chemo can impact your bone health. Bone health is a long-term concern that's associated with chemotherapy. Now, there are many factors that can influence your bone health, like your age, your activity level, or the type of chemotherapy that you're put on. Obviously, eating calcium-rich foods, making sure you get adequate vitamin D, and doing weight-bearing exercises will help with your bone health. Now, these side effects that we've mentioned here, these are the common side effects with traditional IV chemotherapy. But there are people who receive targeted therapy as part of their cancer treatment. The side effect profile for these drugs is considerably different. Many people who receive targeted therapy do find that they get milder side effects. But here's something really important to remember. The side effects that you experience, they're personalized to you. You will not get all the side effects listed here, of course not. But overall, these are the common ones that you should be aware of. For me personally, my main side effect from chemotherapy was exhaustion. I had no peripheral neuropathy, no nausea or vomiting, no chemo brain. Of course, I did lose my hair, but I had no trouble with my white blood cells. Each time they recovered in time for the next cycle. And also the duration and severity of chemo side effects, well, they vary from person to person. Individual differences like your age, your fitness level, your cancer diagnosis, the type of chemo you get, well, that all dictates what type of side effects you get and how severe they are. But your movement and your food, 
they can control this. You can be strategic about supporting your body during treatment. The best place to start is with your food. If you wanna really support yourself during your cancer treatment and recovery, then you need to focus on your food. This is where you should start. That's exactly why I'm linking up this next video here. Click the link here, I'll see you in the next video.